Shipwrecked, Chapter 6, The Peak. Hopefully you're all having a great day. Mudslime wraps you in its slippery embrace, pulling you down the steep mountainside at alarming speed. Oh! You dig your fingers into the wet sludge, trying to slow your rapid descent. And follows you down carefully, allowing herself to be swept from one side, one still standing tree to the next, holding onto the trunks to stay upright. There's a tree down there, and to the right, grab it! You glance back to see the tree rushing towards you. You fight against the grasp of the mud, preparing to fling yourself at the tree. Only one shot at this. I need to catch the log's light past. Yell for her! Catch the log. With a burst of adrenaline, you lunge toward the tree and wrap your arms around the sturdy trunk. Your bond has increased. Got him. <clears throat> you cling tight to the coarse bark. The mud continues flooding down the mountainside, trying to pull you with it, and calls out across the way. Hold on! She pushes hard against her own tree, launching herself towards you. She wraps her muscular arms around your waist and shoves off again, pulling you out of the mudslide and to safety. How does that work, exactly? You lay back on the muddy ground, catching your breath and resting your aching legs. Anne hovers over you, worry written in her face. Are you hurt? I'm fine. It's, uh... Next to my guardian angel. I'm glad to know if I throw caution in the wind, you'll always be there to save me. This isn't the time to joke. If you had just stayed by my... I'm fine. Because I got my samples. You were lucky. You could have hurt yourself, and I can't. I literally thanked her, and that's how hot I get. She stops herself short and turns away from you, obscuring her face from view. You can't what? You can say it, Anne. You care. A kiss was real. Forget it. Did your sample survive? She turns back, arms crossed. You study your face, but realize the moment's passed, so you busy yourself by pulling your heliconian samples from your muddy bag. Looks like everything's still intact. Good, because I'm not do going back to that death trap. It's valuable research. It's a plant that could have killed us. She stands over you and extends her hand to help you to your feet. Let's go. The sooner we get to the top, the sooner we get off Moku. You roll your eyes, anger flashing through your mind. Your fingers dig into the mud surrounding you, and you realize how clean she comparatively is. She deserves to be covered in mud for disrespecting my research like that. She cocks an eyebrow impatiently, uh, impatience flickering across her face. You staying down there forever, or what? Her face is inches from yours. Her outstretched clean hand taunting him. Your heart races at her intense glare. Muddy revenge would taste so sweet. Pull her down in the mud with the... Uh, you get sweet revenge, increase your bond and more. Like it's a roll in the mud. I mean, technically she's already muddy, I'm just saying. You grip her hand tighter, and you drag her into the mud with you. Oof. She throws her hands out to embrace her, brace herself as she lands on the top of you, flinging mud everywhere. You're trapped beneath her, you know, her arms on either side of your head, the wet, sticky surface of your clothes suctions to hers. Seriously? Mm, whoops. How clumsy of me. You're not fooling me. Eh, I have no clue what you could possibly mean. She scoops up a dollop of mud and spears it across your neck. Ugh, no fair. You started this. Then maybe I should finish it. I should... Slide mud down her chest. Ha! Huh. You gather a fistful of mud and slip it down the front of her shirt. Glide your fingertips down the natural slope of her sternum, spreading the grime across her skin. You're making a real mess, you know. As she ever courses through her body, still poised over yours, she presses closer into the heat of your touch. Mud seeps through your fingers as you rake your nails along the pallies and curves beneath her top. Hmm. Do you want me to stop? If you did, I wouldn't have a chance to do this. You feel cool mud against your stomach. You look down and see her palm tracing steady circles over your abdomen. Her eyes twinkle with mischief as her pinky brushes the fabric of your at your hips. Surrender or else. Mmm, like I'd give up that easily. Before she can act, you quickly roll her on her back, panning her wrists above her head. She strains against your grip, her top body writhing beneath you. Good luck getting out of my hold. I'll take that uh, surrender now. Hmm, do you think I haven't escaped worse? Suddenly, she heaves her body to the side, and the momentum sends the two of you rolling down the slick hill. We 
Ah! You try to keep your uh, hold on her, but she wrestles free and grabs her wrist. The two of you finally roll to a stop where she's on top. Her tone and thighs tense as she straddles your hips. You glance up at your hands above your head and sigh. How the tables have turned. Give up yet? Hmm, definitely not. I will win. She hovers just above you, her breath tickling your face. You can hear the pounding of her heartbeat echoing your own. She raises a brow challenging you. You sure? Because your chances uh, don't look so good right from here. It's just a matter of knowing my enemy. I should distract her. Search forward. Pressure looks to hers. She immediately pulls back, eyes wide with surprise. That's, um... The air is tense with anticipation as she holds your gaze. In the next instant, her lips capture yours, a hungry growl escaping her. She releases your hands and you melt into her embrace. Her tongue sweeps against your bottom lip, sending a delightful shiver down your spine. Oh. Your hips buck against her, begging for her touch against your length. Her hand snakes down your body and skims just below your waistband. Your kisses grow more frantic, rising to a fervor pitch. I need... Your mind wanders to how she must feel between her thighs, and all the ways you can satisfy that need. You blaze a trail of open mouth kisses against her neck. Suddenly a taste of greedy mud on your tongue reminds you of the initial purpose. She's so thoroughly distracted by your body that you easily roll her on her back and then pop to your feet, dash away to lean casually against a nearby tree. Oh, for the love of... Told you I'd win. No, do... But listen, listen. This is not how you win, you... Dumbass! She shakes her head and adjusts her clothes before joining you by the tree. Your heart flutters as she approaches, thoughts of her lips still heavy in your mind. You're such a tease. Yeah, this isn't how you win, but a victorious tease! Are you, though? You take a step toward her. The soft ground beneath you begins to shift. Not again. She pulls you against her, helping you retreat away from the questionable spot. Your muddy bodies are slick against the one another as you grip her for purchase. Staying here any longer might push her luck. Ah, we do have a long trip ahead of us anyway. I don't want to risk any more setbacks. She starts ahead of you, giving you a full view of her muddy backside. That's not muddy backside, Pixelberry. Might learn the difference. What's the hold up? Just... Realizing I'll need a shower later because of the dirt and watching you. I mean, walking with you. Whatever you say, Doc. The glint in her eyes raises heat in your cheeks as you resume your ascent up the mountain. The rain has stopped by the time you emerge from the thick jungle of vegetation. When you finally crest the peak of the sky, it clears, giving you a breathtaking view of the aisle. Pretty. Oh, if there wasn't a minor extinction of unexpected within the year, I could see myself living here. There are loads of other islands you could live on that wouldn't kill you. Yes, but it doesn't get any more private than this. It's perfect for basking in the quiet. Stand at the edge of the cliff next door, reveling in the island's beauty, extending as far as the eye can see. You close your eyes, enjoying the tickle of a light breeze on your face as you listen to your serene soundings. We don't have time for this. Oh, for the love of shut up for a minute. She starts to move away, but you catch her hand before she can get too far. A couple of minutes won't make a difference. Might even do you some good. She sighs and returns to your side of the edge. Her hand remains in yours, and a light thrill runs up your arm. After a little while, she lets go of your hand. You reopen your eyes, and the two of you continue your climb. Alright, so maybe I feel a little more relaxed. She turns back to the clearing and drops her bags. This'll do. Highest peak around besides Mount Moku, and I don't care to make a signal fire at the top of a volcano. Ah, at least they're uh, here. Any incoming planes won't mistake us for an eruption. She crouches down and tests some of the dirt in her hand. It's pretty damp. The fire will be harder to start, and it'll make more smoke. Mmm, should be good signal fire. I'll dig the uh, pit. You gather some wood. Why am I always on firewood duty? Because I'm the captain, and that means I give the orders. Also, you're better at gathering firewood than her? I don't know. But I'm the one funding this expedi expedition. You can get the firewood, and I'll make the fire pit. But I... 
Ah, I gotta move on, Captain. That wood won't collect itself. Ugh. She opens her mouth as if to argue again, but shakes her head and disappears beyond the tree line. You get to work building the fire pit, modeling it after the one may she made on the beach. Soon she returns, arms laden with kindling and logs. Successful? Yep, I found this. Flint. Perfect for fire starting. And before fire starters or fire starter song hits in your head. She drops a piece of flint in your palm. Its flat facade is only a couple inches wide. Where did you find this? Half buried down the hill. It'll be easier than relying on a friction fire with how damp it is here. You arrange some of the kindling in the pit, then begin to strike the hunk of flint with the steel blade of your pocket knife. Come on, light already. After a couple of minutes without any sparks, you stare at the setup and puzzle them. This is harder than I thought. It's never gonna light the way you're doing it. You could have mentioned that a little sooner. I was enjoying the view. She crouches next to you and takes the flame. The rain makes the, this different than our campfire, and Flint's a tricky beast. Mm, good thing I'm a beast tamer. And this should be no problem for you if you're up for the challenge. I'm sure you'd pick up quickly with my close watch. Diamond choice. I didn't realize there were so many ways to start a fire. Clearly I could use some pointers. That's obvious. Ouch. Keep that up and I'll make uh, you start every single fire from here on out. Relax, Doc. I'll show you how it's done. You look at the wet logs, flint, and pocket knife in front of you. Eh, well, if uh, it was so easy when we made the campfire back at or fire back at camp. What am I doing wrong this time? She shakes her head as she runs a couple of twigs through her fingers. We need drier tinder. Coconut husks would be perfect, but I didn't bring any with me. Mm. What if we, um, draw off strips of our clothing? If the fabric is dry enough, it would work. She takes her knife and uses it to shear off a patch of her shirt. But I see you're ahead of me. If it gets us out of Moku, I'll happily offer my shirt a sacrifice. She adds a dry material to the top of the pile of kindling and you strike the flint again, but no luck. Now what? Bad technique. You gotta hit with the sharp of a, at a slight angle. Basically, it's kind of like you're trying to sharpen your knife, pretty much. She takes the flint from you and demonstrates slowly with her knife. Just like that. No parallel. Not perpendicular. Maybe we should stick to the rope thing. That seemed easier. <sighs> didn't that take you? Um, didn't take you as the easy uh, type to give up. Give me that. You snatch the flint from her and ready your pocket knife. Okay. I need to strike the flint at an angle. Run the pocket knife along the sharpest edge of the flint, angled just like she showed you. Sparks. I actually did it. Good. I keep at it. Sparks don't matter if it doesn't catch. Grit your teeth. Determined to start the fire without her helm. A couple minutes later, the tender finally catches a little ember glow from within the pile. It's working. Now blow before it dies out. You and Anne crouch side by side, blowing on the tiny embers. They begin to smoke more and more. Please tell me we're almost there. The tender burns brighter, and you finally see the first tongue of flame. I say we're there. We she fuels the small fire with some of the twigs, building the flames taller. I'll admit you uh Oh the perfect person to be stranded with. You can find water, build a fire several different ways, and let's not forget about the coconut foraging from earlier. I am the MVP of our little team up. Hey, I bring plenty of the table, but scientists don't ignore evidence and you have talent. You allow your gaze to trail down her body, admiring the tight musculature of her crafts and the way her still damp shirt clings to her chiseled abs. So, how does your smart-ass captain like yourself know so much about building a fire? When I was 16, I was part of a sacred ritual where uh, I had to survive in the wilderness for three days. Seriously? Of course not. That only happens in movies. Oh, that's what you think. You playfully swat her on the arm. Ha ha ha. No, seriously, what's the truth? It's just one of those skills a sailor has to learn. You know, in case you get shipwrecked. Ha! Cue credits. 
I get that. It reminds me of some basic training when I was studying to be in the field, an ecologist. Hmm, seems your teacher skipped over the basic survival chapter. That's what our guides are for. If you share a laugh, you lock eyes with her. Not sure if that uh, heat that rises in your cheek is from the fire, or... I should get us up, uh, get us some brush from the fire. The leaves should help create a bigger tower of smoke. Oh, of course, well, uh, just be beer waiting. Yeah, you can always help. I probably stands and disappears into the trees, returning after a while with more fuel for the fire. Later in the day, after several hours tending the fire, the two of you stand back to watch the steady column of smoke rise across the mountaintops. Hmm. Signal must be visible for miles. Well, it'll take time. Not many people pass this way. Do you really think someone will come? Eh, you want my honest answer? Mm, give me the blunt truth. I don't know. No one's gonna come looking for me. Mm, my work might send a search party. How long before they realize you're missing? I wasn't... Uh, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to contact them until my research was done here or not. But I'm sure someone will come. We have to push through until then. You take a seat on the soft grass of the mountain top. She eases down beside you, her thigh brushing yours as she leans back on her elbows. Well, at least we can keep each other company in the meantime. Or we can just enjoy the silence. Didn't you just not want to do that five minutes ago? Even though we'll be here for a long time. I'm used to it. Not many people in my cargo boat. Well, except for me. An exception, not a rule. Why did you make an exception for me, though? And don't tell me because of the money. We both know there's more to it than that. She narrows her eyes, ignoring you. She moves to throw another damp log on the fire. Okay, I'll put it another way. Why do you keep walls up around me? After we kissed, I thought we'd be closer by now, but you're like a fortress. Did I do something to offend you or something? Or No, it's just... It's complicated. Okay, have you studied the monobelic processes of Devil's Flower Mantis? I'm good with complicated. Try me. She reclines in the grass and looks up at the great blue sky. You lay beside her, watching the embers drift into the atmosphere. I tried having a business partner once. It's better to be alone. You said you were betrayed. What happened? I told you before, it's the one thing I don't talk about. I get that. I've had a partner that betrayed me too. We worked in a lab together, studying data collected from the region of the Amazon near uh, Tembopata. And when I discovered a new subspecies water lilies, he stole the research and took credit for everything we'd worked on for years. Did you report him? It wouldn't have made a difference. I had no proof. However, it did push me towards field work. Now I get to travel the world and see my research subjects in the wild. I'm glad you got a silver lining, but my situation's different. You sit in awkward silence and wait for her to continue. Finally, she draws in a sharp breath, keeping her gaze skyward. When I first started my cargo business, I didn't have many clients. I barely survived. Then I met Tech Yaquan. She knew everything and everyone said she'd worked for the shipping company in the Caribbean, where she'd build up a contact list. Okay, sounds like a good op opportunity. I thought so too. She convinced me to make her a partner, and like a fool, like ever share of everything. And by the time I figured out she was using our cargo business to smuggle drugs, weapons, and whatnot, it was too late. I'm so sorry. What did you do? I confronted her. She tried to get me to go along with it, but when I refused, she knocked me overboard, let me to drown in the middle of the ocean. She grabs a fistful of grass, and a twin tinge of hurt spreads across her face. It was the last time I ever saw the Wanahua Arahua, the boat that my grandfather gave me before he died. What on earth did you manage, or, or how did you manage to survive? I swam. Thank God I was on a shipping route and someone spotted me. Honestly, it's all a bit of a blur. For what it's worth. I'm sorry about your grandfather's boat. It's not your fault. Unless you're tack in disguise. Eh, definitely not. Just your friendly neighborhood John. She lets out a shaky laugh. Her gaze turns towards the vast ocean. 
At least, tax far away from here. Silence falls between you, making the few inches separating your body and yours feel like miles apart. The rest of the day passes slowly, with most of us bent on maintaining the signal fire. She stands nearby, loading more wood into it. She hardly said a word since we talked about her old partner. She prods the fire with a large stick, sending a spray of embers up into the air. Okay, I can't take the silence anymore. Raises an eyebrow in amusement as she takes a seat next to you. You're the one who uh, has a problem with it. Got any ideas how to pass the time? Mm. Did you ever play those uh, road trip games as a kid? You realize I grew up on a small island, right? The longest road trip I took was half an hour. Okay, what about long boat trips then? You must have played something like I Spy. So your big idea to pass the time is a kid's game? Uh, what if it is? <clears throat> You'd have to make it worth my while. Mm, name your terms. When it gets to... Hmm... She looks you over, mischievous a smile playing on her lips, but you sense the fire behind her eyes. When I gets a kiss, otherwise no deal. All you want is a kiss? I mean, okay. Even though you've been super silent, but okay. I find your terms agreeable. Then the game is I spy the terms, a kiss if I win. Alright, and if I win? Oh, it's cute that you think you have a shot. You roll your eyes as she tosses more brush into the fire. Now pick your subject of no PhD advantages. You scan the lush, colorful landscape of the aisle surrounding you on all sides. Okay. <clears throat> a vibrant violet flower catches your eye and you risk a look at it before glancing away to avoid detection. Purple hibiscus. Alright, I got it. I spy with my little eye. Something has, has its own language. I'm a little rusty, so bear with me. Is it a flower? You didn't even ease into it. So that's a yes. I'm starting to think you're better at this than you let on. You talk about flowers nonstop. It wasn't a big leap. Mm, using your powers of deduction well played. Next question. A mischievous spa smile spreads across her face, and you notice her watching you instead of searching the area. Is it purple? How? And a hibiscus? You are such a cheater. You have to give me some chance to win. Hey, I'm just using all my resources. And what resources are those, if I may ask? I know you think you're subtle, but you looked at the flower at least five times now. I thought I was being discreet. Not in the slightest. So how about that kiss? Not so fast. We barely even played. We can make it best two out of three if you're going to be stubborn. Fine. I am. She quickly glances around and her eyes meet yours again. All right. I spy something. You spy with your little eye if we're playing. We're doing it correctly. Fine. I spy with my little eye something I almost lost. Hmm. That's a tricky one. Is it your knife? You know, since it almost tipped into the ravine earlier. Yep. Seriously, I was right? I, I was right. Don't let it go to your... Take that. I got it. Head. Hmm, it appears we're all tied up. <sighs> get the kids ready. I'm gonna get this one. <clears throat> You look around the clearing for something to trip her up. Your eyes finally land on her red shirt. Mm, I mean, I, I don't know why you're landing on red shirt, but... <sighs> I've got another. I spy with my little eye. Something... Dirty. Sneak a peek at the mud puddle, your left, and then back at her. That should throw her off the scent. Something dirty, huh? That could be almost anything around her. Ah, that's the point. She looks around her surroundings and then takes her shirt off. Your eyes go wide as she stuffs it behind her. What are you... You spy your dirty thing now? That's cheating! That is f***ing cheating! 
You were infuriating. I could have sworn I covered my tracks. I figured you'd try to mislead me. It was obvious when you looked at the mud puddle. Not to mention you were definitely oogling my shirt. Again, such a cheater. And I don't oogle, I examine. Me too. It's how I won. Speaking of which, I think I've earned my prize. She smirks, leaning towards you. The sweat clinging between her perked mounds of her breasts glistens in the fireline highlighting her cleavage. Your breath comes quick as you gaze, your gaze moves upward to her luscious lips. Oh. You've earned every bit of this. You lean forward, closing the distance between the two of you. Your, her mouth opens in anticipation. But you pull back right before your lips touch a wicked grin and appears across your face. Mm, how's that victory taste? Like I'm uh, still owed my prize. You price a soft kiss to her cheek and growl in her ear. Too bad you didn't specify where you wanted that kiss. I guess this is payback for bending the rules. Uh, no fi fair fight, no fair prize. Mm-hmm. She puts her shirt back on. A low, distant rumbling noise draws your attention up to the sky. You look up, expecting to see a storm coming, but instead, are my eyes deceiving me? Please tell me I'm not hallucinating. I don't believe it. It really is a plane. You launch your feet, waving your hands while jumping up and down. We're saved! No, you're not. Yeah, I'm sure it's that easy. Yeah, chapter five, or six, you know, you're done, you know. Just, yeah, we're safe. Woohoo! Yeah! No. Anyway, without further ado, thanks for watching. Please make sure to like and share the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, become a part of the community, and hit that bell to receive notification of when I upload more content. Without further ado, it's a uh, day, if not less, depending on where you are in the world, before you have a happy new year. Hopefully you do have a happy new year. And uh, have an extra drink for on my behalf. And, uh, yeah. Ring in the new year. Try and live each moment as if it's your last, because literally and figuratively, it might. And that's the way everyone should be living their life. You should be good to each other and uh, making sure you do right by one another, but also living your life as long as it doesn't, eh, you know, hurt anybody else. Living your life to the fullest. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.